Uh, good afternoon. We're down um, at the back of Morrison. Somebody will probably um, uh, recognise the bridge here behind us has been one of um, the old railway bridges that the trains used to come through um, up to uh, the sidings and obviously under the road to the um, station in Leek, uh, which unfortunately was defunct a number of years ago now. However, I've got a gentleman with me today who uh, has got a petition running of which we'll give you more details of shortly. Um, and that petition, and I will read it to you, basically states and declares that the improving rail infrastructure and providing better rail services in our city and wider North Staffordshire is vital for the growth of our local economy. Further, that it would create jobs and unlock the potential of unused brownfield sites in our area and further, that it would greatly benefit, uh, benefit commuters and passengers and that's a petition that Jonathan Gullis, MP for um, Kidsgrove and Talk has put together um, and is asking the North Staffordshire population to get involved with um, the idea being that we will reopen the um, leak to Stoke Line which I know is a debate that rumbles on throughout our area Jonathan <laughs> uh, week in and week out across certainly um, the leak TV forums and others so um, I thought I'd get Jonathan over here and he's very kindly visitors, uh, visitors from um, his office, he's over in North Staff um, and he's come to spend some time with us and I've got some questions for him uh, and I'm going to put those to you. Absolutely. Jonathan, thanks very much for coming over, I know that you're a very busy man. No, no, look, I think this is a really important project yeah. I'm delighted that you know, this debate's been rumbling on and I get the benefit of just jumping on the bandwagon, so to speak, and hopefully making the case for it. Absolutely. We need the people of Leek to get behind this, and ultimately what we're trying to do is to gather some pace um, and, and certainly put forward, I know the thoughts of the town in the main are that we'd love some better transport links. So here we go. We'll find something out about Jonathan himself <laughs> first and then the petition. Um, quick fire questions then. I've got seven of them. Where do you originate from? So uh, I was born in Salisbury, but when I was very young, grew up in Stratford upon Avon, and uh, up until I got selected as the candidate, was living at home as a 29-year-old man in my childhood bedroom, okay. and now I live in Talk. Oh right, so that is one of the questions. What is your professional background? We'll find out out first. No, that's fine. So I was a, I've been a secondary school teacher my entire career. So started teaching back in 2012, and until I got elected, um, I've, I'm which I'm now a member of Parliament. Why become a member of Parliament? Oh, well, <laughs> I came a member of parliament because what I did is I came up campaigning in Stoke and just fell in love with the city and realised there's a huge amount of potential and levelling up as the sort of become the buzzword now of government. If you don't do that in North Staffordshire, which has been grossly underfunded by governments of all colours for many decades, then we're never going to deliver that project properly across the nation. And I believe we need a strong voice and I believe I'm a gobshite, so there we go. Good luck. How long have you been an MP? Since December 2019. Super stuff. And why Kids Grove and Talk? Why would you, did you choose that area or were you So yeah, no, uh, so Stoke on Trent North, Kids Grove and Talk, obviously, so I've got Tunstall and Burston, the two towns out of the six of the Stoke area. Um, the, the seat was available, I'd fallen in love with Stoke and I put my application form in, went and spoke to all the members and I was very grateful to be selected as the candidate and then moved up uh, within two months and uh, up into Burston and live there until I bought my house in Talk. So Super. yeah. And you've answered my next question. You do live within the constituency, so I that's fantastic. Indeed. Very unusual in this day and age, but very good all Thank the same. You. My first home as well. And we've just had a baby, so baby uh, born uh, and uh, in Stoke on Trent. Which delayed our interview by a couple of weeks, might I just add. Um, what are your thoughts then on the local area and the people of North Staffordshire? Do you know what I love about the people up here? They are blunt and they are honest. And uh, whether they like me or not, or they think my ideas are good or not, they tell you how it is. And I think that means that we get better communication between us as politicians and the public. Uh, I think traditionally, let's be honest, people up here are grafters, they work hard, they don't ask so much in life, but what they do want to see is their area just given a bit of love, like the way they love it in return. So that's the job of government, that's the job of the private sector and big business, is making sure that we finally get some love back in this area. Absolutely fantastic, I like it. Going back to the petition now then, how much of the line between Leek and Stoke is intact and with some clearing of vegetation maybe is serviceable? 
Have you got an estimate of that? As so, I don't, have a, so I don't have a direct amount of actual mileage, but I'll be let me be quite frank. Part of the line has gone where we're standing right now. Oh, no. um, clearing the vegetation simply won't be enough. We're going to have to look at putting down new track. Yeah. But the good thing about putting new track down is a track that lasts for a long time and will allow us to think carefully about where the track can go okay. now with the road networks that yep. we've got and the housing developments. Okay. Uh, so it would, it would, this is the part of this bid is to get that survey over the line so we can then actually have a proper in-depth analysis. Okay. But more importantly, ask people where they think as well. Okay, good. Would stations and platform stops have to be built along the route? Presumably they would in order to pick up in certain villages. And Absolutely. I don't want this to be just a one way from Leek to Stoke and vice yep. versa. I want to see the town, for example, of Milton reconnected yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. as it once originally was. But I wouldn't necessarily want the stations back at their exact locations no. because some have disappeared. You've got What's housing there? nearby. Um, so we and obviously if we're going for heavy or light rail that would have a big impact on the environment yep. Yep. Um, but absolutely we have to have stations along the network otherwise we're just sort of we're fixing one problem but yeah. not fixing <laughs> yeah. a bigger wider problem yeah, which yeah, is yeah. North Staffordshire is one of the only areas in the country that after beaching saw further cuts to yep. rail services which I think is an abomination we are we are very disconnected here we are indeed uh, unbelievably um, moving on um, would you have an estimated cost of the project, just a ballpark? Uh, so no ballpark, this is a reason for wanting to get the uh, survey, this is why we're putting this bid in, because the idea is that we will get money from government to do a proper business case on it, yeah. where we'll have some realistic figures, but let's be frank, it's gonna be well in the millions, okay. so, uh, but it's something that I think will long term pay its weight back in gold. Yeah, okay, um, which sort of leads me nicely into the next question. How would it be of economic benefit to the local area so again part of that study is to is to then engage with our chamber of commerce our local councils to engage with businesses and ask them i would want to see the line service not just residents but also service schools because if you're taking congestion off the road and as we know the a34 the a53 you know the a500 at times all can be car parks Absolutely. especially in stoke where they've got some major well health organization breaches of air quality yeah. so if we've got better roads that are more open then therefore productivity goes up but also if we can actually have stops nearby places like abbey alton or four green where we've got cultural heritage museum pieces and places up in leek and stoke town center itself yeah. then local markets will benefit local shops like i say in milton where we've got like the teapot in milton for example huge opportunity for local businesses to gain more tourism and that's where i see an opportunity and even fingers crossed, if we can get the Stoke to Leak line done, or Leak to Stoke, depending where which side of the line you're on, um, there is the possibility to extend that potentially then into Alton Towers in the future, which I think is the biggest selling Absolutely. point of all of it. One hundred percent. It's one of the things I was going to ask you, but it's nice that you touch on it now. Um, that connectivity hasn't just got to go centre to centre. Um, there isn't any anything stopping us really branching out to uh, the more popular tourist um, destinations, and certainly it's been um, a factor in people's thinking in this town, those in power, that um, in actual fact, they were more frightened about people leaving Leek and going into the potteries yeah. to do their shopping, as opposed to looking at the economical benefit of people actually coming into Leek I think would be a bigger. I think, I think I that think, would be a bigger thing. I think you hit the nail on the head there. People in Stoke will very happily go out of Stoke and look around it if yeah. they had better access exactly. to public transport. Absolutely. And agree. I can tell you the one thing I would love to, with my baby and my partner Nikita, come visit Stoke and Leek much more regularly and do our shopping over this way. Absolutely. If we didn't worry about getting stuck on the roads as know. we know they are. I mean, Karen Bradley, who's uh, the MP obviously for the area, is yeah. doing a superb job in backing the campaign and, and been leading on it for quite a long time. It takes an hour and a half from London to Stoke, and then it can take from an hour to maybe an hour and a half if she goes by bus on the road network and over to here. So we want people to be greener, but then you need the infrastructure, you do. You and do. that all comes down to good quality do. public transport. You do, I completely agree. Um, would you expect the service to be used for leisure? Um, purposes as well as business as uh, can you see it being a multifunctional line oh absolutely the, the line ended up and i lived on the line down in Stockton oh, okay. brook i grew up down there years ago 
um, the line ended up using freight only um, at, at one time, but I'm sure there's got to be some duplicity whereby it can be used for a Absolutely. number of different functions. Freight is a huge economic opportunity, yep. but I think about you know, places like near Stockton Brook, let's think about it, we've got some of the lines uh, where you've got the Excel Academy and Sneaker yeah, in, yeah, yeah. why could we not find a way of putting that line nearby that school and therefore thousands of students yeah not needing to be bussed in by yeah, car, yeah. but able to get into the train. We see it in London, it takes a huge pressure off the road Absolutely. network, and I think that we can recreate that here. And as you say, for leisure, people just simply wanted to get out of their local area and go and visit other parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's an amazing app, I can't remember the name of it, where you can type in your area and sort of see distance of travel. People in Stoke tend to stay and travel within Stoke. Yeah. But that is, again, I think due to a lack of poor connectivity. Whereas if we have that access, people will, from around North Staffordshire and around the United Kingdom will pile on over here and yeah. have a look at what, what amazing things we have to offer. Tourism is one of our biggest industries in Staffordshire. And in Stoke-on-Trent, tens of thousands of jobs rely upon it. So believe me, they'll be wanting people to react on a leisurely point, viewpoint as well as a business viewpoint. Absolutely. Can the service be economically viable? and give value for money because if you take a look at our bus network at the moment if it is let's say for example my wife and daughter uh, want to go shopping at Primark um, it would cost £15 return to go on the bus £7.50 each return ticket from Leap to Hanley C can, can we make this economically viable so if it is can, that we're going to spend millions on it? I think we can there? do. So if you look at the line Stoke to Longton, a day return there is £2.70, oh, much sure. cheaper than a bus. Sure. And I and actually train always ends up being that way. Uh, I absolutely think it can be economically viable. Of course it's going to be a huge spend up front, but actually if you look at when stations have reopened or lines have reopened, they've always exceeded uh, nationally expectations in terms of usage. So therefore, I think there's plenty of evidence to suggest, absolutely, you will see a huge uptake in that opportunity right. and it will pay itself back. But let's not pretend anything. It won't pay itself back in one or two years. It might take 10 to 20 years, but I still think that's a huge economic benefit and reason why we should do it, because it will be serving generations of individuals, not just the here and nows. And do, do you think there's maybe room? Um, it, it keeps getting muted um, around government and, and throughout um, chambers etc whereby and, and, a, and, a, and a wider um, populace as well um, continue to talk about nationalising rail again or um, nationalising various services is there some train of thought sorry for the pun is there some train of thought whereby little projects like this might remain in government ownership I'll be honest with you, I don't think that will be the case on this okay. one. I think for it to meet that economic viability, we're going to have to open it up onto the network rail and existing franchises. Okay. But there certainly could be and I, uh, an opportunity to open up to a wider network. I'm certainly a believer that actually what we want to do is franchisation can work effectively, but I would love to see competition within lines by different service providers. Yeah. And that way then return a cost benefit, which I think ultimately the government has looked at because we've already seen that sadly the government has had to take over franchises where they're simply not yeah. delivering no, no, no. trains on time or trains at all and as my father who's someone who regularly commutes up and down across the country teaching piano believe me he wants to see a long-term solution and so do I to yeah, the problem absolutely absolutely fantastic so um, we um, we want to get um, behind you and support um, this um, project and, and the petition that, that you were uh, um, that you have out there how can the Leak TV people access um, that uh, that petition and get behind it? What, what so what you need to do is you need to go onto my website, which is www.jonathangullis, Gullis is G-U-L-L-I-S, dot com, forward slash Stoke to Leak Line. And, and I think that if we can get thousands of petitions, uh, signatures on there, it will really help to make the case to government. We are through round one which says that there is an economic case, but they still want more detail and they want to see there's a public will yep. behind this. And I know there is, because yep. like you say, it's been talked about plenty of times in forums, yep, on social media, on the leaked TV here, All the time. and in places like where I went campaigning, it was brought up time and time again. But if I don't show and demonstrate that will of the people, then the government have got an easy excuse out. And this is about not giving that excuse no, no. and saying to people, very clearly down in Westminster, now's the time to finally 
put money back into North Staffordshire, connect our city, connect our region, and allow people the opportunity that can bring prosperity and wealth to all. Brilliant. Leak to Manchester, leak to Derby, leak to Stoke. It can all start here. The people of Leak TV need to get behind this petition. Don't sit there thinking, well, it's going to happen without you. It won't. You need to get going, get on it, and please, please um, help this fine young man um, achieve what it is he's trying to achieve for our area. Um, I'll finish this by saying thank you, Harvey uh, Tweets, for filming this. Um, really good of you to help us out there, pal. Um, hope everyone enjoys the, the rest of the week and the weekend. It's going to be fantastic weather. See you all soon.